Let's discuss an example of double dual cam design. In this particular example, we're going to be designing a double dual cam to move a follower from zero to two inches in 60 degrees. We're going to dwell for 150 degrees, fall again back to zero because we're falling two inches in 90 degrees and dwell for the remainder. Our cycle time is going to be four seconds. And so this is how we would determine the angular velocity for our cam. The angular velocity in this case would be 2 pi divided by 4 seconds. We choose a suitable profile for the rise and fall to minimize acceleration. So this is an important piece. It is telling us what kind of function to use. We need to use a function that minimizes acceleration. Acceleration of what? This is going to be acceleration of our follower. That item that's moving from 0 to 2 inches, then dwelling and falling and then dwelling again. We can think of the follower as the valve in an engine. And then finally, we're going to plot the SVGA diagrams. And again, SVAJ stands for Position, Velocity, Acceleration, and Jerk. Here we've tabulated the motion requirements for this particular um, cam design. Again, this is a double dwell. We have two dwells, a rise in 60 degrees. This 60 degrees is a beta 1. There's always a beta associated with any aspect of the cam profile. And so the rise happens in 60 degrees, and it's a 2-inch rise. Then we dwell for 150 degrees, again, a second beta because it's a second thing happening in our cam uh, profile. Um, and there's no motion, so H2 is equal to 0. Um, by definition, a dwell means no motion. So while the cam rotates, the follower does not move. And then we fall, which means we go from 2 inches back down to 0, and so that's a change of 2 for our height, and our beta is 90 degrees. Um, and then finally, a, a dwell for 60 degrees, meaning that the total is 360. The total will always be 360 for any cam design. And again, we're back down to 0, ready to start again. And so this is just a table of what was previously mentioned as the requirements for this cam design. Now we're asked to choose a curve or a function which minimizes the acceleration. And we'll look at these accelerations, some of which we focused on before. The modified trapezoid, the modified sine, and the cycloidal displacement. The polynomials we have not yet discussed. Um, here we see the accelerations plotted for all of these various uh, functions and we want the one that minimizes acceleration. So we see here that the max acceleration of this black line here is the lowest and that's the modified trapezoid and so that is the one that we will choose for this particular cam design. For this design we're going to use something called the SCCA equations. These are found in your textbook um, equations 8.13a through 8.20 we're going to use these equations to define our curves. And again, our curves are for position, velocity, acceleration, and jerk. The SCCA stands for sine, constant, cosine, acceleration. These particular equations are best used for double dwell cam design. The rise function, or the fall function, again, the rise and the fall are the same equations, just inverted. Um, these, the rise function is broken into five different segments, and we'll see that in a second. Here we have the five segments of the SCCA rise function. These segments can also be called zones, and so you see them here, one, two, three, four, five. Y stands for position. Let me zoom in a little bit here, make it a little bit bigger for you. So we have the position curve, the velocity curve, the acceleration curve, and the jerk curve. We know that velocity is the derivative of position, acceleration is the double derivative of position, and finally jerk is the triple derivative of the position curve. And so this function for position gets us from zero at the dwell position all the way up to the end of the rise where y is equal to one. Now we know in our particular case we want to rise two inches, and so we simply multiply this function by two inches. Now let's focus in on these different zones. There are five zones here, and what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on the equations for zone two. And so here we see these equations. Um, the position equation looks as follows. Our velocity equation looks as follows. 
our acceleration equation is just equal to CA and our jerk equation is equal to zero. And so some of these variables we haven't yet talked about, but we will. And so if we look at the zone two, we do indeed see that the jerk is zero, just as the equation said it would be. And we have a constant acceleration equal to CA. And we have some more complicated function for both the velocity and for the position curve. The good thing about the SCCA family is that simply by changing these variables, CA, uh, you see a B here. Um, as we go over, we can see that there's a, a variable C. Simply by changing these variables, we can go from example from the modified trapezoid to the modified sine um, simply by changing these variables. Um, where do we get these variables from? They are also in your text. And so if we go here, we'll see that, for example, um, on the acceleration um, curve, we see the modified trapezoid, the cycloidal, um, the modified sine, um, a simple harmonic, the constant acceleration, all members of the SCCA family. And we can see that if we do indeed want to plot the modified trapezoid and use it for our position, our velocity, and acceleration and jerk, we need to set B equal to 0.25, C equal to 0.5, and D equal to 0.25. Uh, the modified trapezoid is the one that is straight here, which gives us a CA for this particular curve of 4.89. So that will plot um, the modified trapezoid function for um, the acceleration position, velocity, and jerk. If instead we wanted to use the cycloidal function, we would change um, from b equals 0.25 to b equals 0.5, from c equals 0.5 to c equals 0, and so on. And so that makes this a powerful function. The SCCA family is powerful because we can simply change from one function to another just by changing the variables. So we can have one program uh, where we use um, uh, zone functions as you see here, and then we just simply have to change these variables and we'll be plotting a different um, curve in this family. We have done that using MATLAB. The code or program is called the SCCA.M program and it plots the SVAJ curves. This program will be provided to you is capable of plotting all members of the SCCA family. Um, and it can make these plots as a function of cam angle, and that's in degrees or radians, or it can plot these functions with respect to seconds, which in our case is, uh, I think we're doing this design um, in four seconds. Here is the result. So we see here that, um, let me zoom in, get a little bit bigger in terms of our position. We want it to rise from zero to two inches, and we wanted to do that in 60 seconds, so 60 is somewhere right in here. And you can see that we did indeed get up to 60 at that point, and then we dwelled, and I believe we dwelled for 150 degrees, and so that's going to take us out quite a bit. So 150 plus 60 takes us out to a little bit greater than 210 degrees, where we then start to fall, and we make that fall, I can't remember, I think it was 90 degrees in which we fell, and then we dwell for the remainder, ready to start again. And so as you can see, this takes place in 360 degrees before we cycle. And we can also see the other curves plotted. So we have a velocity curve here, we have our acceleration curve, and we have our jerk curve. And so um, all of them have been plotted with, with um, as a function of degrees. We can also do the same in terms of um, plotting with respect to time. So here we see the same curves. Notice they end at four seconds because that's how long the cycle was supposed to be. And in this case, um, I believe it was 60 degrees for our first um, rise. And so if we take 60 and divide that by 360 degrees and then multiply that times four seconds, we know that the rise should happen in about 0.66 seconds. And you can see in here as we zoom in, um, that rise did happen probably in about 0.66 seconds as it should. Um, and you can see the others plotted with it this time with respect to time um, or seconds on our um, x-axis. And that's the end of um, our introduction to the SCCA families of, of curves used to do a double dwell cam design.